some of the older sick, so we can pray for them. This will be mentioned later in the evening when the pastor leads in prayer. We welcome you too if you're listening at home, and uh, we want you to know you're always welcome to join us, so consider that. Uh, we look forward to meeting you folks. If you're here today and you're a new and never been before, we welcome you especially, and I hope you have a visitor's card. If not, we'll be sure to get you one before you leave so that we have a record of your attendance. We'd love to know who you are and a little about you. All right, um, today is Communion Sunday, and uh, <clears throat> we look forward to celebrating our Lord's death uh, later in the service. Uh, remember that prior to this year, we had individual envelopes, giving offering envelopes with numbers on them. We don't do that anymore. When we did, you recall there was once a month a communion offering envelope, which gave you an opportunity to give to a special purpose or cause. What was that? Well, that was the deacon's fund. That offering goes to the deacons for their fund, which is for the purpose of providing any emergency needs of our congregation and occasionally we give towards a need outside our congregation. Now, since you don't get a special envelope anymore, you may think I don't have to give, or I shouldn't have, but we would like you to continue, and simply what you need to do is possibly include it in your regular giving check and put a note how much you're donating towards the deacon's fund or the communion offering. So, again, we don't want to forget that, and. Um, that uh, could be done any week. It wouldn't have to be on communion Sunday, but we always remember especially that when we take partake of communion. So keep that in mind. All right. Um, next week, <coughs> uh, Sunday school, we pastor will be back with his um, orthodoxy isn't an uh, in the Sunday school hour. The following Sunday, and by the way, next Sunday is potluck Sunday. Uh, I hope you signed up, and if so not, you will. Uh, the following Sunday will be Father's Day, and we also are going to have a, I believe, a guest for Sunday School, uh, Brenda Matthews, a missionary we support. Uh, so we we'll encourage you to come and hear her. Um, look forward to that. We're glad today to have some special missionary guests, Dan and Beth uh, Dion. They are pastor's sister, she is, and uh, so relatives. Um, missionaries to the Philippines and Dan shared and both of them actually shared in Sunday school we learned quite a bit about their lives and their ministry and he will be sharing in church and his wife playing the piano so we're looking forward to their participation in our service this morning um, now uh, on the 18th as Bob said next uh, two weeks away is Father's Day, and there'll be a treat for the fathers if they come, or actually all men, I believe. Um, fellowship follows the Sunday service, and uh, there's a sign-up for that, and we encourage others to sign up. And you may say, well, you know, I'm not prepared, I can't afford a three-course meal, and you don't need to. Um, even if you just bring a donut, or even if you brought nothing, um, we don't need to eat, you know, a, big, a lot of food. We just simply need to get together and fellowship. So um, we encourage others to get involved and, uh, and participate. <clears throat> and remember, if you're the food provider, you're also included or involved in the setup and cleanup. That's something to keep in mind. All right. Now, one last announcement is... Um, the First Lux are planning to have BBS this summer at their home, a backyard outdoor BBS, assuming the weather holds. And um, they need some help uh, before and during. The first thing is they like prayer, people to pray for them. And um, we need to pray for a good attendance uh, for the neighborhood and the schools around. We need to pray for the salvation of those who attend and pray also for everything to run smoothly. Um, this is kind of a new venture and they just look to God to make it a blessing and make it profitable and spiritually rewarding. So who would like to pray? I hope all of us will commit to pray for that uh, beginning, I believe, in July, running <laughs> once a week through August. Is it last Monday in June and running through five weeks in July? Okay. 
Very good. We'll hear more about it as time gets closer. But right now, we can begin praying for them. And secondly, uh, next week, 11th of June, uh, they would like at least four couples, um, and it could be individuals, and they could couple you up, to go visiting in the neighborhood and spread the word, let people know what's coming. Um, so David would like you to see him if you could be involved in that, and uh, let him know so he can plan on this. Um, so that's what he's hoping for next Sunday, the 11th of June. All right, uh, that's all the announcements I have, so shall we have a word of prayer and get our service done. Thank you, Jesus, for what you do for us at Calvary. We're here today to especially remember. We do it every day, but today, Lord, we're going to partake of the elements which remind us of your sacrifice. So we thank you for what you did for us. Now, Lord, challenge us to do our part in response, in sharing that good message with those we meet from day to day. Bless each one who's a part of this service, and as we worship together, we pray that you will be praised. And we thank you as we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Saints. Good morning. I just want to say welcome, welcome, welcome one, welcome all. Especially to our brother and his wife. You know, this morning, you know, just listening to you, you know, it, you know, it just makes me think, you know, God will definitely take care of his own. Yeah. You know, and one of the things that my brother said this morning, so true, is that I'm doing a, a track, sharing a word. You don't know, you know, what's going to happen. Just do it. And before I be singing this song, I'm going to just say this. You know, a, brother, a friend of mine was handing out some tracks down in Manhattan, you know, when we were down in the Bronx. And he had the track to this guy that he see was passing by. And the guy stopped and read the track. And he said to my friend Albert, do you really believe what's on this? And Albert said to him, yes, that is why I'm handing it out. And the guy said to him, you know, I was about to commit suicide. This track, these words that were on this piece of paper saved my life. Just like that, after a few minutes, of reasoning because the guy was thinking I'm about to go kill myself. Ask God for encouragement. So our first song here this morning is five in the hymn now five thirty seven and the title of that song is Lord here I am. We please take what hymn now.
brother-in-law and I were visiting with my brother and sister-in-law, if you can follow that mess. And the discussion came up about supernatural events and de you know, demonology and ghosts inhabiting houses and things like that. And this morning, the grandma of electronics shows up here. <laughs> okay. First things first. Our memory verse. This is a memory verse one. Our memory verse this month is Hebrews 10.23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Hebrews 10.23. Okay, folks, remember, I am making a commitment to really summarize these this year. I have been challenged. Challenged or chided about my bad memory, I'm not sure which. So join me in my struggles and really memorize this as we go through this this month. Really make a point to memorize it. Uh, we have a handful of uh, prayer requests this morning. Uh, number one is Alex. We found out just this morning. What time did they call this morning? Oh, it's about 9.15. Okay, about 9.15 this morning, Liz called and told Betty that Alex fell this morning. Alex has had a tough year. 2023 has not been good so far with Alex in a variety of different things. Um, and this is the latest in it. So uh, we'll keep Alex in prayer. Pray that they don't wind up in the car <laughs> before the end of the day. Or if they need to, they will get there, whichever is the right thing there. John and Rhonda are recovering from COVID. We have heard, was that last night or this morning? This morning, uh, Rhonda said, she has tested negative. John is still testing positive. Uh, you're both feeling better. Even though John is still positive, he's feeling better, so that's a good thing. Uh, I will expect we'll start seeing him back again uh, by next week anyway. We'll see both of them. Uh, do we have anything updated on Ben? Guys, to <laughs> I, I ran into him and his mom. You ran into him? That's the good. For those who don't know, he was on a tractor and he was hit by a car. Uh, so, okay, you ran into that. And he's pretty much done as much as he can. He's been around in his locker. And he's at Vision Works. So, so that he's doing better. That, I meant to check on that earlier this month. For this week, I think it's a, do we have anything else? I don't know. Diane has nothing. <laughs> Mark is down. I'm still a little off today with his elements and stuff. So. Henry Senior is feeling yeah, a little off. Yeah, so on our way here, he chose to stop with our family down here down the road. Okay. And Henry Jr., the ninth, correct? The ninth? Right? Uh, Yes. The ninth. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Henry has a stress test, and from what he was telling me on the way in this morning, he's been practicing real hard at <laughs> <laughs> work. So uh, we keep keep Henry in your prayers this week. And if there's something wrong, let the doctors find it, figure it out, and deal with it. And let, let's make it that simple. So uh, we'll, we'll keep that in. And anything else, Mindy?
John and Rhonda, who cannot be here due to COVID. And we thank you that they're on the mend, and we pray that you will get them back fully mended and get them back to us shortly. For Alex, Lord, we do pray that you will get him fully recovered and uh, stop this cycle of problems that he's been having this year. He's had infections. He's, he's been in the hospital a couple times. And, uh, Lord, we pray that you'll just get him strong. We pray that you'll get him back solidly on his feet and uh, working toward full health again. We thank you for his strength. He has had 80 plus years of real good health. And we praise you for that. And now that things are failing here and there, we pray that you will give him great grace in these things. Father, we pray that you will be with Henry Sr., not feeling quite right this morning. Uh, whatever that is, we pray, Lord, that you will get him to bounce back again. Uh, continue to deal with all these little things that plague him. And in the meantime, deal with Henry and Melissa and Nicole as they deal with him in the same household and deal with all these little things that he has. Pray that you be with Henry Jr. as he has some high stress events at work and to complicate matters, he has a nuclear stress test this week. Father, I pray that whatever the test reveals will be easily dealt with. Pray that the doctors will be on top of it and Henry will respond to whatever course of treatment is prescribed and that you'll get him back on his feet fully and quickly. Thank you for them and their participation in our church and the stress they have just getting here every Sunday over this great distance. Lord, we ask you to be with Lillian. Having had yet another fall, it has been some time, and that seems to have been her pattern over the years, is falls and trips to the hospital and going home and recovering. And Lord, we pray that you will again allow her to bounce back. We thank you for the years of health, the years of grace you have given her. She's a part of our church. She is, though she is not here. She's still a part of our church. She is prayed for. She is loved. She is cared for by folks in our church. Thank you for the, the great service our folks do provide her. And we thank you for the love she has for the people in your church here at First Baptist. Lord, we put the rest of this morning in your hands. We ask, Lord, that you will be glorified, be honored in everything we do throughout the rest of this morning including the fellowship time afterwards, where we greet each other, where we share our concerns, where we just have good communication. And we gather because we are your people. Father, now we kind of shift gears and we take the moment to return to you a portion of those things which you have given us. You are a gracious God and a giving God. And as we take the moment to return to you some of what you've given us, we pray that we are blessed by the act of giving and that the church is strengthened by giving and the gifts itself. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
seated. Something a little different today rather than do our couple of days off as we would normally do this week. Uh, now that our piano is tuned reasonably and being played regularly, this time I decided I was going to ask my sister, now let me say it right, I wanted to show my sister off a little bit. <laughs> she has played the piano since she was four? Seven. Seven. Okay. Maybe she played at it when she was four. Uh, anyway, she has graced our house. And she's even made our piano sound pretty good. And uh, that's a story in itself. So I'm going to ask Beth to come and give a special presentation on the piano, and then I'll introduce Dan.
they have been married 50 plus years and they have spent most of that in the Philippines as missionaries. Uh, very grand time they have had. They, they just had marvelous things that they have seen the Lord do over that period of time. So it's a great pleasure. Dan, come give us a word. Those that are already saved, those that are born again, 
those that have Jesus in their heart. It goes on and says, by the mercies of God, and I think of His mercy, and I praise God for His mercy. Amen? I can't do anything without God's mercy. I tell you, I'm, I, I, I fall from my feet, I tell you. It's just, I, I, I know how to get in trouble, I tell you. But with God's help, with God's mercy, He can sure help. Amen? He can sure direct. I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, and then it says that ye present your bodies, and he uses a couple of terms here, a living sacrifice. Now in Sunday school you, you learn about the priest that takes the knife, comes down, plunges into the lamb. That lamb is a sacrifice. That lamb is a total sacrifice. And, and here the Lord is talking to me, the brother, the Christian, the same person, by his mercy. And it's not like you, Christian, to be a living sacrifice. Yeah? While you're walking on this earth, while you're breathing, while you're alive, he said, I want you, Christian, to be a living sacrifice. In other words, like that lamb gave it totally. God wants you to just say, Lord, you can have me. You can have me. You say, well, not that's for the pastor. No, that's for every <coughs> born again Christian. God wants you. He wants to lead you. He wants to use you. And, and you know what I find as I study the Bible? I find that God can do a better job taking care of my family than I can. He can do a better job taking care of my finances than I can. He can do a better job with everything. The leading of God. And that's just what God wants. He wants to lead you. But he says, Christian, I want you to be a living sacrifice. Living sacrifice. Holy. That sounds pretty important, amen? Because I find so many Christians are willing to ride the fence of holiness. Uh, the world, God, the world, God. Holy, acceptable in God, which is your reasonable service. Hey, what God wants me to do, where God wants to lead me, don't you worry, it's reasonable. It's nothing wrong with it. It's reasonable. The leading of God. Dear Heavenly Father, now take this time. Guide us, Lord, as we open your Bible, as we look at the Word of God. And I pray, Lord, that we can hear from heaven now and direct our paths now. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as I look at this here, I talk, I talk to people, and they're talking about the leading of God, and they're talking about things that they're doing in their life. I find sometimes Christians, I don't know, they, they, they say strange things. Such as, I'm moving over here, and I would ask him, well, is there a good church over there? Well, no. I said, you sure God wants you to go there? Oh, yeah, God will understand. Mm -hmm. <coughs> God will understand. And I find that statement is said a lot. God will understand. And it has to do with things that are questionable. Things that just don't make sense. Things that you scratch your head on as a Christian. Let me give you a couple of questions. Because when you say things like God will understand, let me give you a couple of questions that goes along with that maybe. Does God ever calls you to sin in order to accomplish his will? Silly question, right? <laughs> you know, as I considered over in Proverbs 3, it says, how he shall direct. He will do what? Direct thy path. Doesn't sound like you're going down the wrong path that day. I look over at Hebrews 13, it says, he will never leave thee or forsake thee. 
So if he's not going to forsake me, I guarantee sin won't be involved. But you know, but that statement, God will understand. God will understand. You know, you use that term loosely, but you need to think that through before you say it. Another question that goes along with God will understand when it comes to leading to God. Does God ever lead you, lead you contrary to the Bible? Anybody that's saved knows that's not going to happen. Over Psalms 23, he leadeth me beside still waters. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. Hey, if he's leading you in righteousness, it's not going to be contrary to the Bible. It's not going to be down the road of sin. And so you can stop saying, God will understand when you're doing something wrong. Now, what God does understand is you need to get your heart right with God. True? You need to get things right when you're trying to go the wrong direction. But let's look at verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. Don't look like the world. Don't act like the world. Don't talk like the world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know what Satan wants from you? Your mind. He wants your mind. He knows if you've got your mind, that you're not going to let God lead you. God's not. He's going to try to put that barrier up, that stop sign up. And he wants to take that mind of yours. He wants to put garbage in. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect, perfect will of God. That's the leading of God. When God is leading you, you are in the perfect will of God. I have people talk to us about how dare you take your young children to a mission field where they're going to shoot at you. Yeah, it's in the perfect will of God. And I read his Bible his word, and I, I see a promise from God that he's going to take care of me and my family. Amen. Amen. So the safest place to be is in the perfect will <coughs> of God. If you're a lawyer, a Christian lawyer, the safest place to be is in the center of God's room. If you're a teacher, safest place to be as a teacher, a Christian teacher, is the center of God's will. Right where God wants you. Amen. That's the safest place to be. Because that's where God can lead. And that's what he wants to do. He wants to lead. He wants to do. He wants to do so much and you just don't understand sometimes what he wants to do. In fact, what happens, we just step, sit back and we find ourselves when we have things happen in our lives and we try to come up with some words, two words in particular. Why? Why? Why did that happen? Why did my brother die? Why did I get that sickness? Why, Lord? Why? And we get stumped by that. Why, God? And we let that dictate our lives instead of what God's Word says. The leading of God. Let's look over it real quick, like Romans 8 28. Romans 8 28. And it says, We know that all things, all things, everything, all things work together for good to them, them that love God, 
to them who are the call according to his purpose. And I've seen Christians, I've heard Christians judge others because they're having trials in their life, problems in their life, and the other Christian will look and say, uh huh, there's a problem there. They obviously are not right with God. Maybe God's trying to direct them. Maybe try, God's trying to get a hold of their attention. <coughs> Amen. You know, sometimes God uses, uses failure to get us back on track. Maybe God's trying to stop us from making that move that you think is so important. The Legion of God, amen. The Legion of God. Why did my mother die? Why? Did, why did? Hey, if I look at the Bible, we're all going to die. And so what a, what a question that is. What a question. The leading of God being, is in being the perfect will of God and doing his purpose. That's what we see in verse 28. His purpose. That's not doing my purpose. It's doing God's purpose. Lord, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? Do you, do you, there are people in your life that you can reach with your testimony that I can't reach because I don't know them. <laughs> they can watch you. I've had strangers come up to me and say to me as they watch me, they say, are you a Christian? Hey, praise God, they're watching you, man. But whoops. <laughs> If you're making, if you're going the wrong direction, if you're failing God that day, saying nasty things, they're not going to make that statement, are they? Are you a Christian? I remember years ago, I was working with, I was at this job, I was working, and I remember this one man that I had that worked there. He, he looked like he was, um, he looked like he was and a bad dude from some bad organization, you know, just like, like, whoa, stay away from him. And I remember him coming to me one day and saying, man, I've been watching you. <laughs> and he paused and said, I want what you've got. I want to know about Jesus. Hey. If, if there was ever a list I could have made, I, I would have had him at the bottom of the list of a person that could never get saved. And there he stands. Mm. He's been watching. He's been watching. You don't know. You don't know. And sometimes God will allow failures. Sometimes God will allow difficulties in your life. So he can get your attention. But yet when you have problems, what do you do? Wow, good God. Whoa. <coughs> Maybe he's trying to bless you and you don't even know it. You know, people think that, you know, they watch it somebody in somebody's life and they say, man, looks like God's always blessing him. You know, God wants to bless us all. Just says uh, some of us are always making the wrong choices, going the wrong direction. Uh, it, there's no blessings down that road. And God will bring you to a point in your life where there's forks in the road. You've got to make choices which way you're going to go. You're going to follow the Bible. You're going to follow your old life. Which way do you go? Which way do you go? God wants to be he wants to lead you. Now, what I want to do, being we have the foundation set, is I want to look in our lives, me and my wife, and I told you about how in Senate school, as far as 
how I told God, I'll go wherever you want me to go, Lord. Show me a place nobody wants to go. Let's look over at Romans. Romans 15, verse 20. Romans 15, verse 20. Romans 15, verse 20. Okay, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. And God, you know, you look at that verse and God might give you something different. But when I read that verse, God was saying, I want you to go someplace, someplace that nobody else wants to go to. Hey, I found there were folks that needed to get saved there. There was a need for churches there. And there was a need for a man from Belgium to get saved. I found it out. You just don't know. Lord, I want to be in the perfect will of God. Lord, lead me. Now being the perfect will of God doesn't mean that it's going to sunshine all the time. It means that God's right there with you through the storm. Through the storm. Hey, the storm might come, but you've got God right there with you. God right there with you. And so here he is. He says, now I want you to go where nobody wants to go. So what do I do, Lord? What do I do? Matthew. Look at Matthew. Back to Matthew. Chapter 10. Verse 16. I want you to go where nobody else wants to go. Matthew 10, 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. And I guarantee when I got to Eastern Samar, I felt like I was sheep in the midst of wolves. But Christian, Christian, if you're doing things for God, you're going to have days where you feel like you're sheep in the midst of wolves right here in the USA. I guarantee it. Because why? Because Satan's on a warpath. And he doesn't want you serving God. He doesn't want you to be led by God. He doesn't want you in the perfect will of God. He wants you to do his purpose, Satan's purpose, not God's purpose. <laughs> but at times you feel like, hey, I'm, I'm sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as servants. <laughs> Wise as servants. When I would travel in America, I'd come across some great men. And I'd sit down with them. I, I, they try to help me as a, when we started, just started back in the early 80s and so forth. And they'd try to give me counseling. And I remember this one preacher in South Carolina. who was around 80 years old at that time. He was still young also, man. He patted his Bible. And he said, son, I have read this book through many, 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 many times. But he said, do you know what happened this morning when I read my Bible? God gave me something new. God gave me something fresh. God touched my heart again. And he looked at me and said, Son, don't you ever stop reading the Bible. I have, you know, in, in, in uh, traveling and being in churches and talking <coughs> to missionaries, I have sometimes they will, the men of God will confide in me and so forth. And I've had missionaries, I, I've had pastors. <coughs> That would confide that in me that I'm having problems taking time to read the Bible. I, I, I'm, I have problems taking time to get on my knees and pray. And I stop and think about that. You know, I won't tell you what we did for advice and so forth. That's 
That's between me and that man of God. But what I do is I stop and I think about the people that sit in the pews. Because see, if a pastor, if a missionary is going to be honest and confide in me like that, I wonder if everybody in the pew is reading the Bible. Hmm. This is the word of God. This is where you get strength. This is where you find, what's the word? Wise as serpents. <coughs> wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Hey, I want truth. And I'm not going to find it. If I'm going out into the world, I'll find it in God's word. But then it goes on verse 16. Wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Oh, I've talked to Christians. And they come back and they brag. Well, I won that battle with that lost man. I said, did he get <laughs> saved? No. I said, well, it sounded like you lost the battle. Hey, it's not time to brag. <coughs> you need to go there like, hmm, harmless as a dove. You say, how can I go to battle as a harmless as a dove? Because the Holy Spirit does the fighting. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to get on your knees and pray. Pray. That's what God wants you to do. He wants you to be faithful, be a led of God. Yes, you hand out that truck. Yes, you tell that person about Jesus. Yes, Lord, I want to be the best person that can serve you. I just want to do anything I can do. That's me. <laughs> For Jesus, Amen. Don't try to compare yourself with the other person. Yeah. He needs to be the best him for Jesus. But if I so often get to a point and say I'm afraid, they might laugh at me. Saints will make sure they laugh at you. Hey, when I went to Samar, and that Catholic priest had them write those letters. And that Catholic priest set up those speakers and yelled and screamed at me for day <coughs> after day, week after week, called me all kind of nasty names and everything. Hey, I've heard Christians quit for less than that. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't ever quit. I find the cook books, they, they have problems. Hey, I did not plan for COVID to happen, did you? <laughs> I did not plan for lockdown to happen. Did you plan that? Let me uh, define lockdown. Maybe some people need a definition. Lockdown. You're not allowed to get on an airplane and fly any place for a couple of years. Lockdown. You cannot get in a boat and go any place for a couple of years. Lockdown. You cannot take your private vehicle and drive out of town because there'll be armed guards there to turn you around. Lockdown. Lockdown. You are over 65. You're not allowed to walk the street. You're not allowed to go into any, any store. You cannot leave your home. Lockdown. If you get COVID, and you refuse to go to the hospital like we did, they will come out and yellow tape your house like a crime scene. Nobody can come and go. You are the bad guy. Lockdown. You say, well, how did you live? Praise God for wonderful secretaries at our church. Amen. They can come out and get some money from us and they go shopping for us, come back and drop, hang the food on the gate. Members of our church would make food, come by and hang it on our gate. Amen. Amen. That's a 
That's love. But I come back to America and I hear people say, I know why COVID took place. It was politicians. It was the communists. They made it. And I respond, no, it was sin. It's garden of the garden of Eden. The garden of Eden. <coughs> we all started it, amen. We started. We brought sin into the world. I look at the Old Testament and I find that when people did wrong, God gave them bad leaders. Hey, it's awful easy to blame the blame the king. But if I'm in sin, it's awful hard to blame the king. But maybe I'm the one that's guilty. Hey, did you plan? Did you plan? Hey, when you find yourself not obeying God, when you find yourself walking away from God's way, when you find yourself fearing man more than God, we have a problem. Hey, I've heard people with this COVID, that had more of a fear of man than God. Lord, I want you to leave me. I want, I want to be in the perfect will of God. Sickness, that shouldn't stop that. Hey, you go back hundreds of hundreds of years, there were men, there were women that died, that were burnt alive for the cause of Christ. And you know what? You search that out. They were in the center of God's will. Hey, if I'm in the center of God's will, then nothing will go wrong. <laughs> well, well, that'd be nice. But when you have an enemy like the devil, you're going to have things go wrong. You'll have COVID. You'll have cancer. You'll have a failing of a test. That if you had got that thing passed, you could have taken that job. And God didn't want you to go there. So you weren't going to pass that test. See, sometimes we look at the negative and we say, that can't be of God. Maybe it is of God. Maybe God did not want you to pass that test. Maybe God did not want you to go there, move there. Maybe God did not want you. So we stop. <coughs> Why God? Why God? Why God? Hey, I look at this COVID, and I did not like COVID. I did not like it when we got COVID. I did not like the idea that we almost died of it. That was not fun. But let me tell you what took place in the Philippines. There in Samar, there in Mindanao, the places that we had started churches, those places. Let me tell you what did happen. And I hear it as I talk to pastors in America about how wonderful God is. Oh, there was, a, there was a, you couldn't do, you couldn't do, you couldn't do, yes. And it's not time to break the law. It's a time to what? It's a time to lift up God and let God be seen as a wonderful leader. And you in the perfect will of God. We saw people saved every week in our works that we had there on Samara and then tonight. We saw people baptized every week during COVID. And we couldn't even get to church. It's just like here, isn't it? Just like here. We saw three men 
say, God has called us to start new works. And people would say, John, are you sure you don't want to make this cold things over? No, God wants me to start now. What about the restrictions? What about the difficulties? God will take care of me. Three men went out during COVID and started three different works that are still going on today. Can't be done, can't be done. Hey, with God, all things are possible. Amen. Our Bible college closed down for a year and a half. Year and a half. And when Bible college got ready to start, oh, what are we going to do? We probably will only have one or two students if that. The government finally came down, gave us permission to drive our vehicle out over to the next province and on to the other provinces. We brought in our students, many trips. We had 19 people in our freshman class. We never had that in that particular Bible college right there. You know, if you add them all up of all the Bible colleges, you yeah, had a lot more than 19. We never had 19 in that one Bible college. But God had been working. God was not on vacation. God was leading. All we had to do was say, Lord, I want to be in the perfect will of God. The perfect will of God. The students came. We said, let's do things right. Let's do things right. We'll have the, the people that have been coming to church now, we'll put them up front. And in the back of our property, we'll put the students, have a separate service for them. We won't mix anything. Yeah. Quarantine. self quarantine. The health department came out with armed guards. Mm -hmm. He said, you're doing it alone. He said, he gave us permission to go. And so after a while, talking to him nicely, they finally stopped saying, they got to go home. they got to go home. they got to go home. They started saying, okay, well, they pay a big fine. These are Bible college students. They can't afford big fines. So we talked to them more, talked to them more. And they finally said, well, if they go out and do community service, then it'll be okay. Oh, so now they're going to go out and be around all the COVID people. <laughs> <laughs> and we said, okay, okay, that'll be fine. <laughs> and so we tried to clean them up nice and good and everything. <laughs> and they went out and did community service and college began. Five people graduated this year. Praise God. Five more people. Amen. Amen. But yet we look back and we say, it can't be done. We had two men during COVID that decided they were going to go to the, go to the foreign fields from the Philippines and start churches. One was going to go to Thailand, and the other one went to Cambodia. And they were going to be deputation during COVID. People were saying, you can't do this. It can't be done. And then Satan to help try to prove his point. One of them got COVID and almost died from it. He got better. Hit the deputation trail again, raise money, and next month they'll be going to Thailand. <laughs> Amen. They raise their money going. <clears throat> the other one will be going next year. The one that was the converted Islamic got saved, finished Bible school. Seminary, he went to 
got married, he's taken his family to Cambodia to start churches. It all took place during COVID. You sit back and say, but it can't be done. Hey, we have a wonderful God, a powerful God. And he wants to lead you. He wants to bless you. Christian, he wants you just be willing to be in the perfect will of God. Lord, here I am. Here I am right here. Right here. I'm right here. So just tell me what you want me to do. Where you want me to go. So I, I don't want to go to the Philippines. Maybe God wants you to be a wonderful member in this church, a very active member in this church. Maybe God wants you to talk to your neighbors about Jesus. Maybe he wants you to be an example to the people you work with or shop with. Lord, lead me. Lead me. Lead me. How about it? We serve a wonderful Savior. You know, you can't hide behind the fact that, well, I'm not the pastor. I'm not the church. God still wants you in the perfect will of God. Amen? Amen. He wants you in the perfect will of God. Are you willing? Here I am, Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, oh Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you should take this thought, this message, and Lord, just work, just work in our hearts. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we can hear great things coming from First Baptist Church mm -hmm. Amsterdam. As people are being led of God, as people are being blessed by the Lord, and so I just pray this message will just reach out, touch hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We have to turn our heart to that time. We call it the Lord's table. We call it communion. It's that time where we join. Maybe not all at the same moment, but we join with believers around the world. And, and as Dan mentioned, <coughs> this is written, really written to believers. Uh, so hear the words of Paul in 1 Corinthians 11. The Corinthian church was a mess, like a lot of churches are. But in the following instructions, I do not commend you because when you come together, it's not for better. But for the worse, I'm going to skip on ahead to verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was, he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, <clears throat> which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And then he says, whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. We practice here what we call an open table. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, if you have trusted him as your, as your Savior, you are welcome to participate in the body and blood of the Lord. And even if you have, but if you're harboring sin, if you're harboring resentment, if there's something <clears throat> that God's convicting you of, now's the time to deal with it. And when the elements are passed, and then we present the elements and we consume them, you can do so with a clear conscience before the Lord. Gentlemen, will you come?
Peter portrays Jesus as having done, the first thing he did was ask his father's blessing on the bread before he passed it. Stanley, would you ask please? Our God and our Father, this morning we truly thank you for the time spent in your presence. Here we are, Father, around your spread table, giving you thanks, Father, for all that you have done for us. We think of what we are about to do, to take this bread which represents your body that was broken at Calvary, that body on that cross, you did it all for us because of love. Your word tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son for us. And this morning we celebrate you, O oh God, thinking, Father, way back on the cross of Calvary for what you have done for us, given yourself. We give thanks this morning as we celebrate, Father, your death, your burial, and your resurrection. Again, we say take thanks, Father, as we offer praise to you. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And as they did in that day, let's all eat of it. He also prayed before he passed the cup. Lee, I'll ask you to ask the Lord's blessing, please. Lord. For all those years the Jews waited your arrival, many sacrifices were made, blood flowed from the temple, trying to cover their sins, but there was no perfect sacrifice to be given to you. When you came and you gave the perfect sacrifice yourself, a sinless man, and also a holy God. And because of your sacrifice, we now, as we as mentioned earlier, we are now able to be a living sacrifice. No longer do we have to sacrifice ourselves or animals, but you have made the sacrifice for us so we can just serve and take the blessing that you have given by giving your blood. We bless this cup, give thanks for it, give thanks to you. Amen. And as in that day, they passed the cup and they all drank of it. Let's do likewise. They didn't have a song leader back in that day. They just sang a hymn. But we're going to have Stanley lead us in our closing song. After that, I'm going to ask Dan and Beth to join me at the back door. Excuse me, back door. Don't run away without singing. We just want to thank our brother for sharing that word with us. And as we close, could you please take your M down and turn to M544. That's M554.
would like to help Dan and Beth in their ministry. Uh, I'm just going to say, if you're going to write a check, make it to the church, and we'll figure it out later. So let's uh, dismiss. Don't anybody sneak out the back way. Everybody stop and have time, a moment to greet them, and they'll be with us for a talk. Heavenly Father, dismiss us with your blessing. I pray that each and every one of us has been challenged in some way by the events of the morning and the challenge that was given to us. And that last hymn, have thine own way. Have it in us, Lord. Be with us through the day. Dismiss us with your blessing. Keep us safe till we return together again. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Have a great day, guys. <laughs>